Hey, it's two o'clock on a Saturday. I am back. And, you know, I tried, I wanted to try a Saturday to see how that would go with everybody. Uh, I hope more of you can join me on Saturdays and on Friday afternoons during the beginning of rush hour. Um, and, and so today was like, I've got all this time to plan, get ready, do everything. And <laughs> then we got a call from the realtor. We did not get the house we were, we were looking at, uh, last time I was on. Uh, and I am Randy Jack Ogren. I go by RJ for those of you just joining. If you would like to share this video, I will be working on painting a mountain, space mountain in the distance, and trees, not happy trees, even though I knew Bob Ross and he painted happy trees. <laughs> I'm going to put my glasses on so I can, oh, there's the screen. Hey, uh, but anyway, then the, we are renting this house we're in right now. We found this fabulous house, keeping our fingers crossed. We're putting a bid in on it uh, this afternoon. Uh, the realtor promised not to call between two and three o'clock. <laughs> then she said, well, maybe I'll just call every couple of minutes so the phone will keep ringing. Uh, thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, here we are. Uh, and uh, and anyway, the, the our our landlady, uh, this is her house, of course, and she's moving back into this house when we move out. And she wanted to have the plumbing, a couple of things done with the plumbing, and the plumber was supposed to be here, uh, this was all of a sudden, at noon. At uh, 1.15, he wasn't here yet. Uh, and then he did show up, very nice guy. Uh, and uh, then he was uh, taken aback by all the Disney stuff because he had to come down in the studio to look, check something down near, in here. And uh, I'm looking at the clock going, I'm running out of time. <laughs> but um, I'm here, I'm back, I'm on. And I'm happy that you're all joining me today. Uh, and wow, I mean, I just, I, I'll be right back. Don't go away. I had to get my coffee. So <laughs> I'm trying to put, paint in the in the tray here so I can paint uh, I, you got to see my mug today this is this is uh, one of my favorites um, I have a lot of Peter Pan mugs because of the uh, fact my family has always said I'll never grow up I don't know why they say that but I think it's true <laughs> and it's very hot coffee so I'm not gonna take a sip out of it right at the moment uh, remind me at some point to drink some coffee otherwise by the end of an hour we all know it'll be cold uh, I'll start the timer, and um, I got white paint in my tray, and uh, now I, I'm going to uh, put a little bit of black in here. I'm going to work with a small brush, a couple of small brushes to work on Space Mountain. Now, Space Mountain, I have to explain this painting, okay? Uh, can't see it but there's a boat and th this is tape I've got a picture of Space Mountain tapes I, I know I'm I'm a decent artist but I'm not that good I can't remember exactly what, all the details of Space Mountain so I did find a really good picture I could use uh, to accomplish this and in reality uh, th this is Bay Lake uh, there is a boat just below where this tape is uh, coming across it's going toward uh, uh, the campgrounds and then this is the contemporary. And I didn't put the new building of the contemporary right here, but I did put Space Mountain and you see a little more of Space Mountain than you actually see. And then the castle way over here in the distance. Nobody will know unless they actually go out in Bay Lake and look back. So don't anybody do that. <laughs> so, okay. And oh, hello from Elgin. Oh, hey, Terry, how you doing? Um, uh, Elgin, Illinois, in case you were wondering, that's that's west of where I am here. Um, and uh, Denise and Kevin and Guillermo, I think I'm saying that right, from Savannah. Hey, how you doing? Um, share this with your friends, tell everybody I'm on. And of course, I do when I, when I do finish the one hour, I do post this on all my different uh, sites so people can watch it. Um, what I'm going to do right now at the top of the mountain is just paint the very top of it is that has that angled piece on the top. And you can see I painted the sky in around it, but 
um, I had the mountain a little bit bigger. I made it up. I'm making it a little smaller than it was. But anyway, this top piece is actually uh, like a pure white in color. And and then you have the, I might use a little bit, a really small brush, a little tiny brush here. So I'm still working just with white and I'm going to paint. You didn't see that. <laughs> there was something on my brush besides white paint. I think it was a bug. Um, okay, I'm going to paint the one spire, the tallest one, just a little bit of it so you can get an idea. And there's another one right there. It's actually um, the big spire is, is four different pieces that come together to create that. And then there's some spires on either side. Uh, so for right now, I have that in. And then the rest of the mountain is actually uh, like a cream color. And to create that cream color, I'm going to use a little, whoop, a little bit of um, burnt sienna if I can get the top open. And uh, I'll need this burnt sienna for when I do some trees. I know that sounds crazy, but true. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to this. Uh, again, if I can ow, get this top open. I'm hurting myself. This will be the show where I keep injuring myself. For those of you who've known me for quite a while, I had a period <laughs> right at the end of the last year and going into the first year where it was like every few days I did something to injure myself, including cutting the tip of my finger off. That's another story. Um, I'll save that for another time. Anyway, so I'm mixing. Um, you always start with the lightest color when you're mixing colors. So you want to start with white and add just a teeny bit of of bird sienna and I put in just a touch of, of uh, yellow and I think we'll have it just about the color we want it to be. Yeah. Okay. So the main part of the building is this color. So I'm not going to paint all the ribs right now. I'm just going to get this in. And there is a, a ring that goes all the way around the building right at this level here. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a couple things about Space Mountain. Um, now, all of you know about the Utilidor, the tunnels underneath the Magic Kingdom, which are really not underground. If they were really underground, they would be uh, six to eight feet into groundwater. Uh, <laughs> the water level is only about six feet down uh, in the sand in, in Florida. Um, and so, yeah, it's higher in some places or lower. But anyway, um, so to avoid that problem, they when they started building the Magic Kingdom, they first built on top of the ground the tunnel system. And then they built above that the main level that you all walk on when you go in the park. Uh, and they just built the ground up. And you have no idea that you're actually already about 15 feet, uh, or actually probably a little more than that, about 20 feet above what was the original ground level. Um, but the reason I bring that up is that the Utilidor uh, connects you can in a big circle all the way around Magic Kingdom. Uh, it goes from Main Street. Well, let me start with Main Street. Down the middle of Main Street, there's a main tunnel that goes all the way down, and and comes out actually under quite close to the the uh, Geppettos um, and uh, the restaurant there. Is it Geppettos? Yes. <laughs> anyway. Um, and connecting just a little bit in from that uh, in the fantasy land is a tunnel is it's a circle that connects to it and goes all the way around and that main tunnel bisects that circle so you can get to most of the attractions 
from underground. You stop at different places, and little doors would go up, secret doors and everything. And uh, and I went in all of them. I had to go everywhere when I worked. I just wanted to do that. And I, uh, uh, but then I discovered very quickly, of course, that there were some attractions that you cannot get to with the tunnel system because they were built later and further out. You cannot get to Space Mountain. You have to go to Space Mountain, we would have to go on the main level. So we would uh, either get in our golf cart, it was a Pargo was the brand, we just call it the Pargo for short. And uh, we would jump in that in the early morning if we were gonna go check something at, at the Space Mountain and work on it in there. And um, we would drive up from behind Small World where our studio was for the four of us artists. Um, and actually we would drive between up between the haunted mansion and small world and there was a big gate right there that we could open up and drive through and then we would uh drive through the park which was always fun when there was nobody in it and uh, drive over to space mountain now you also couldn't get to the carousel of progress from the tunnels um you certainly couldn't get to the the race car ride because you didn't need to <laughs> but and uh and just so you know the uh the uh 20, leagues under the sea you did not enter that through the tunnels you actually went from behind that to get to it but the uh let's see what else uh splash mountain you can't get to it from the tunnels you can't get to uh, uh big thunder because those things were all built afterwards and further out. And you cannot get to the Haunted Mansion from the tunnels. We would just go up and go over to the mansion, uh, again, driving up into the park or walking because it was so close. Um, but Space Mountain, wow. Oh, wait, let me look, let me see who was here. Ah, Christine, yes. Hi, nice to see you. Uh, I can't see you, but I'm saying hi to you. Uh, Alex, a magnificent feat of engineering. Yes, and without a doubt, one of the safest um, uh, thrill rides ever because, of course, Disney checks their rides every every morning and runs them. And yes, they have had accidents, but uh, that's what they try to avoid. What I liked about Space Mountain is that it is all attached to the building. I mean, it's, it's really rigid. And uh, I always felt safe riding on that. Although uh, when it first opened, we had uh, an employee of Space Mountain who uh, should have known better. And uh, he was showing off to his girlfriends when he took them on the ride. This wasn't when he was working. He was visiting and he stood up and uh, got taken out by a cross piece. So don't ever stand up in, the sp in Space Mountain. Not a good idea. Um, so, okay, I've got that color on there and well let while that's drying for a minute I'm gonna mix some of this for the trees. Now you notice that these are all black and they are not black trees, but I discovered over the years painting that especially in acrylics that when I was doing trees um, I just started doing it this way. I would paint everything black um, when you look at uh, nature or distance and pictures and everything else, or even up close, it gets really dark and actually black uh, in the deep recesses and everything. And on top of this, I put this on earlier so it'd be dry uh, for this session, and then I will paint in different levels of green. Now I'm using I'm using Booker's Green, uh, one of my favorites, um, and then I am using, see, I don't even have, usually I have all these colors uh, in my tray. This is permanent green deep. So you can see the two colors. And let's see, I already have, okay, I think I've got everything here. Yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, now I have my brush. <sighs> okay. Now. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to go with the pure color of, of Hooker's Green. I'm going to mix that into 
uh, some, I'm going to take some white here, and then I'm going to mix in some hooker's green and a little bit of the burnt sienna. And black I don't have time usually I would mix a much larger amount of this uh, than what I'm mixing right now and put it in a tray so I would have it uh, don't go away I'm coming back um, I uh, wanted to grab another quick color there. Thalo green is also very good to use. So I'm mixing a little bit of thalo green in there too. And what I feel I've got it about right. Okay. Now, I'm, yes, <laughs> it's like pointillism. Um, I'm just going to fill this in. This is my distance color. Now there is another way to do this too, but I but because these trees are so far in the distance, uh, I could use sponges. But I'm not going to today. Maybe. All right. Now I'm going to come down with some trees coming up here and then I skip over a little bit and come over this way then we have our ground area here then down low um, Make sure, I'm, make sure I'm still on the screen. Um, surprisingly, in these in these views, which is funny, you don't see a lot of uh, palm trees. Put a view in there, and come down here at the base. Now my water is not done, even though I've got the color on there. I'll come back afterwards and, and put reflections in the water. Um, I want to make sure I get this along the top because some of the trees in the distance will be a little lighter and then as you'll see. But I'm leaving some of that black. And now I'm going to mix some more of this burnt sienna and bring it in for this a little bit more, a little bit more, maybe a little lighter. So I have a little white to it. Get a nice contrast. Uh, what you're getting in the trees in Florida are these pines that uh, so often the Florida pines are not uh, green. They're, they're actually this. Uh, Brown. Well, you look at me think they're just brown, but I'm using the word burnt sienna. And um, just giving the impression of trees right now. Now that is. Okay, I'm going to stop on that for a minute. Um, I'm actually going to um, paint in a few tree trunks, <laughs> some of the pines. Our house in, our house in uh, Maitland, just north of Orlando, um, when we first bought it, it had six pine trees in the backyard. And 
those Florida pines, they're not the nicest trees. I mean, they don't, they're just not great trees. They drop a lot of needles. And um, we were planning to have them cut down. And then a big uh, storm came through uh, Florida. Uh, in fact, we were vacationing and uh, called our daughter to make sure she was okay. She was there with the dogs. She still lived at home. And uh, um, <laughs> she was she was in her bedroom and one of the pine trees was right outside her window and a bolt of lightning hit the tree and split it. The tree fell on our neighbor's house and ripped out our electrical wires. My daughter said that she doesn't remember going to the other end of the house, but when she got there, the dog was up against her leg. <laughs> So, yeah, so we came home and had all the trees cut down. So there's enough of those. But, um, and, uh, ah, Kristen, yes, nice to have you join us. What is your favorite painting? Oh, uh, you, somebody always asks me what my favorite thing Disney is or favorite painting. Um, wow. That's a tough one. I, 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 Hmm. I like doing the Haunted Mansion paintings, uh, but I also like doing the castle. I, I, I don't think I can pick a favorite. If, if, uh, if I have to say one of the things is I like doing cartoon characters. Um, and I have, don't ask me that again. <laughs> I can't answer it. I like too many things um, that are Disney. All right, my uh, Space Mountain is dry, so I'm going to go back to that. And, oh, wait, my coffee is not as hot now, so I can have some. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Terry, you just said it. Don't forget the coffee. <laughs> thank you. And it's still nice and warm. Thank you. Okay, I almost fell, almost fell off my chair. <laughs> I leaned on the arm and slipped. I have these weird days, you know, that nothing's ever normal, but that's what makes it so much fun. Um, okay, back, back to Space Mountain. Now, I hit, did mix this, uh, this cream color, and, uh, but I'm going to start with the little top piece first. This is, this is tiny work, and I need to actually go with white and and some black, make a little bit of gray here. And so I can do the little ribs on the top piece. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to thin it down. Um, and boy, there's a, a little ring around the top of Space Mountain, and then there's the ribs that come down, and as they go across, they... at the center, they're, they're straight up and down, and then as they go outward, they go at an angle more and more, and I need to paint that. much fun painting something this tiny and as they get more toward the end they seem to all run together because they're all so close together and especially at this distance down the uh, left side of this it's going to go to solid gray and darker I'm going to add a little bit more black to that. A little bit down there, a little bit. Because our light is coming from this side. From. And that's too dark. So we just take a little more of the light gray. There we go. Let's get down into that. Lighten that a little bit more because it's too dark. Okay. And then 
come back. A couple of the ribs showing. Okay, on the right side, it goes to uh, solid white. So actually over here, the ribs run together. As they go around the circle, around, around the shape, and, and those ribs start to look like they're just fading away. The, like, the, the lines between them start to disappear, um, especially at this distance. Further here. No, Space Mountain. <laughs> yes, we would drive our cargo to Space Mountain um, in the mornings and uh, we had some crazy things would happen. One of the things we would do is if we had to go and work on the figures that were as you came out of the attraction and you saw the different scenes uh, of the future with the Audio animatronic figures, um, and we actually had to crawl over, up onto the wall, and up into the scene to work on them. Um, and the the uh, to get there, rather than go through the front of the attraction, which meant we had to go all the way around and get back to the exit. We would just go in the exit. Well, by the time we get there uh, early in the morning, like say seven o'clock, we go to the to the Space Mountain, and everything is running, <laughs> including the the moving walkway, which is coming toward us on that big ramp. So we would get on it and run down it. <laughs> so it's like running down the up escalator. Uh, at least it wasn't steps we were doing it on, and uh, we did that quite often. Fell down once. <laughs> um, and another thing we did uh, a couple of times, we had to go and paint the, uh, and work on the figures that you see when you get in the rockets. And after you ride through the, the tunnel with the, the ring of lights coming toward you as you're riding through it, go to the, the, the pulley and the, the 45 degree up angle hill to take you to the top of Space Mountain. Um, I love that because we would walk through the tunnel and it's it's fun to walk because you're walking much slower than the cars go and, and those lights coming toward you. I just wanted to stay in there. I like the blue lights. And uh, <laughs> um, no, I was not on drugs. I just like the blue lights. I like color. And anyway, the uh, this one time we had we had safety belts that we that we had in our studio, took those with us, and uh, we proceeded to uh, work our way up the center uh, between. There's there's two uh, ramps going up, uh, the uh, pulley chain pulleys that are taking the cars up to the top, and in between it's smooth, it's aluminum. Uh, some of it's uh, a white, a little just aluminum color. But it's like a big slide, except you don't want to slide down because you run into things, you kill yourself. And so we, but we had to get to the figures, which are supposed to be in space. So they're standing at different angles. Some of them are standing upside down. Um, and, and when we finally got to the figure we had to work on, we had to find something to hook our, our safety belt to. And that's how we actually were hanging. We we're actually hanging on just from sliding down and touching up these figures. and. and and then when we unhooked ourselves, <laughs> we had to be real careful or we'd start sliding down real fast and probably would be our last day as an artist if we hit some of those things. Um, and, okay. Um, oh, Christine, yes, your Haunted Mansion painting. Yes, Christine, I am doing a Haunted Mansion painting and it is going to be uh, uh, Madame Leota and it's going to be you, in regular lighting, it'll look like a normal painting. Um, and in black light, when you turn black lights on it, it will glow in black light just like you see in the mansion. Cool. Not too long from now. Um, anyway, so <laughs> um, 
Okay. Now I'm going to go back to some uh, uh, gray here. When I do the hotel, there will be not a lot of detail, but there'll be a lot more in it than what there is in Space Mountain or even in the castle because they're so far in the distance. Um, now, now, I'm using gray here, but actually, oh, and let me, there is another ring right here. So I'm going to paint across first. First with the lighter gray. And then I'm going to take a little bit more black. Not go as dark this time. Yeah, it's going to be too dark up there. Um, and then it's on the back side. All right, RJ. Stop thinking about the house you hope you get. We're definitely in the market to buy a big house because we need the space and um, before we move back, well, actually, okay, back up. When we left Orlando in 1994, we moved to Virginia for 10 years and we actually bought this house that was built in in uh, 1885, a Victorian house. It was fabulous. It was great. I had a big space for my art studio and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, over the years, I realized all my work was in Chicago and out in California and in the Midwest. And there, most of my work I was doing. And um, we said, well, this is stupid. And actually, I wanted to really move back to the Chicago land area anyway, because I'm originally from, I'm originally from, I was born in Aurora which is the second largest city in Illinois. It's just west of Chicago. And, uh, but I actually lived in St. Charles. And I actually say I'm from St. Charles, but technically I was born in Aurora. And actually the house we hope to get is in Aurora and only five blocks away from one of my grandma's houses. Cool. And it's still there. The house is still there. I love it. Um, okay. Back to this here. Remember that. There we go. All right. And now we'll do some ribs with the. Now I'm not actually painting the top edge of the rib ridge. I'm painting the shadow that you see between the ribs, and. lines about right. And I, I'm going to go halfway over here and paint the one coming down here so I can get my angles about right. Yeah, that would be like that. There we go. And then I'll go this way about halfway over. The end will be right about there. I actually have a, a, a major minor uh, from University of Miami in architecture. I started out in architecture uh, thinking I wanted to be an architect, and I actually went to work for architects um, right when I started college. And uh, did that all the way through college. Even though when I got to my junior year and I had to take calculus, I'm not a mathematician. Uh, I'm more into the more complex numbers like two plus two equals five. <laughs> That's why I couldn't pass calculus. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and sadly to be an architect, you have to take calculus. Uh, even though while I was working in these offices, I found out very quickly that we never used calculus. <laughs> Anything that was more complicated than simple algebra, we gave to the engineers and they did it. Back at University of Miami, I went back, I don't need this. They said, yes, you do. I went, uh. So I switched, ended up with a 
degree in art education. And minors in sociology, psychology, and of course, architecture, because I had already taken quite a few courses in architecture. And uh, that has been very helpful in set designs that I do for uh, theatrical productions. And also when I'm doing buildings, I do like to paint buildings. I, I really do. There's, there, you asked what I like to paint. There's one of the things. Um, I'm fascinated by the uh, design of structures and making them, and creating them and finishing them and doing all the, the angles and the shadows. Yeah, I have fun with that. Now what's happening is I'm, get, I'm using a little bit darker shade. And again, these are at this distance, especially are just running together into a shadow. That's gonna be a line. A line. And again. And you know what, real quick, Real quick, I'm gonna put some, um, gosh, I don't know where. Where's my blue? Ah! I'll use this, and it's too light. Okay. Um, somewhere I had a blue for this guy, and of course I wasn't ready, so I will use something else here real quick. Um, I wanna define the, uh, the mountain here a little bit better than what I have. So this won't match exactly, but it'll be close. So you can see what's going on here. I still have some more to do on the sky and the clouds anyway, but uh, there we go. Here. I do this a lot when I'm painting. So don't mind me. Wait a minute. Yes, you can't hear me. I, I have enough trouble talking with uh, without a brush in my mouth. Okay. Obviously, I will fix this later. I want to get back on the trees here in a minute. Ooh, okay. Spire. Yeah, going that way. Hey, now you can see it better. Okay, that's what I want. Good. But next you see this, the sky will be nice. Um, this is why I like to try to have everything ready when I do this. Uh, you know, painting sideways and everything else is crazy. Um, painful class, yeah. Calculus, extremely. I switched professors after the first two weeks with one professor in calculus, thinking he was he was talking so fast and I was lost and it had to be him. And then I got to the other professor who talked slower and I realized that my brain was not keeping up with anything no matter how slow they talked um, or how they defined it. And actually, this is true. In the first class I had, uh, when we were into that second week, and Professor would talk so so fast that, and he would, and he would, and we had chalkboards and we didn't have the. Now I'm really dating myself, right? And he would be drawing it you know, like this on the wall, you know, or on the, on the chalkboard, and we're trying to write stuff down and going, I don't know what he's doing, and um, 
finally he got done one day. He says, everybody got that? And this one student next to me raises his hand. He goes, yes, what is it? He goes, I don't know if I understood that exactly. And so the professor, obviously very ticked off, he raises it and does it all again real fast. And he says, does that explain it now? And he said, the student said, not really. He says, well, maybe you don't need to be in this class. So he gets up and walks out. <laughs> and I got up and followed him. <laughs> oh, yeah. School day. Anyway. Uh, not a clue. So, there's my calculators. Now I can put in some more ribs, and they, as they, angle changes on each one, I should say, and the changes in between the ribs, the space gets wider between them, so that you see more of the of the cream color. And as we here we go. Hey, that worked out pretty good. <laughs> okay, now I'll go. I, if, in case you're wondering, but what I'm doing with the brush when I reach back, wait. Yes, you can see. Um, I'm getting a little more water and adding to this. Uh, because this brush I'm using, of course, is so small, and this has to go on easily. Uh, if it's too thick, I'm gonna, it's just going to drag. Oh, and there was something I, I don't think I've told you before, but but uh, when you're uh, all you artists out there, when you're painting and you're done painting, um, wash your brushes out with uh, soap and water. Soap, yeah, hand soap is perfect. Uh, it keeps your brushes from getting stiff. Um, well, I, I do that uh, every time. Grips right there, and then let's do the other one again. Oops. All right. Now, on this side, as it fans out, it actually uh, gets lighter, even though your the spaces between are much more narrow as it goes around here. So I'm not. Doing too much detail here. Okay, I wonder where those cans are. Okay, then we're going to go back over to this side, which is the other one I want to get. A little bit more. center of that too. Um, okay. I will do a little more on on this uh, not not today because I'm going to paint some more trees here. There's another spire there. There are spires over here, coming around, and over here. And there's another one right there that I'm going to do a little more work on. 
Uh, I will clean that up a little bit. But basically, uh, it's close to being done because you don't have all that room there. Uh, between the, I will fix this. I can come back with the cream color now and fix a couple of, of the lines. Suzanne didn't like to go on Space Mountain, um, and I'm not a big roller coaster buff myself, but I did like to go on Space Mountain. I can't anymore because of my uh, injuries from, from Vietnam and, uh, and some back trouble, too. Doesn't, doesn't like being thrown around. My body doesn't like being thrown around on the ride. Uh, but some years ago, uh, we went, actually it was, it was, uh, around Christmas time Then it was cold. It was nice and cold. We loved it. And, uh, we were with our good friend, Holly. And, uh, so Holly and I went on it and that was back when you had the seat belts. You didn't have a bar that came down and Holly got, la she was sitting in front of me between my legs. She got laughing so hard on it, on, on the ride. <laughs> and she started sliding down and I was losing my grip on her. By the time we pulled up to for her to get out you couldn't even see her she had slid all the way under the nose <laughs> of, the, of the seats <laughs> and her head pops up suzanne was sitting there waiting for us and she lost it it was funny um anyway <laughs> uh, gotta love it all right now how much time do we have Oh, 13 minutes still. Well, that's good. Okay. Now I can concentrate on some trees. Uh, I'm going to... Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ah, yes. I'm going to get a sponge just so I can show you um, the difference here. All right. So... You, I got, I soaked the sponge in water just now, and then I'm gonna squeeze it so I have these little tips on it. And if I were to do this, you get that nice mottled look, um, and you can create the, the trees. I'm not gonna do this on these trees here, but I just wanted to show you that. The trees in the foreground, which are over here on the, on the this side <laughs> on my left, uh, I will use the sponge on those and certainly in the foreground down at the bottom of the painting uh, because it's much closer to you and you get, you get the effect of seeing actually the leaves and the trees. But right now, Now I'm dropping things. Hello, world. Okay. Um, yeah, again, if you're watching, uh, share this with people. Uh, if you just join me and say, who is this guy? Uh, I'm RJ Ogren. Um, actually, it's Randy Jack. I don't like the name Randy. Uh, it's not Randall, Randolph, um, or anything. It's, it is just Randy on the birth certificate. You know how many times I've had people argue with with me, especially when you go overseas, and they say, what's your full name? I went, Randy, and they go, what's your full name? I went, Randy. I, it was like this ongoing argument. They didn't believe me. How can you? Oh. My mother just went with that. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back and mix some more of this green and burnt sienna for the trees here. And yeah, that's good. That's a little bit darker. Also, as you do trees, um, the further they go in the distance, 
you can make them lighter. And as they come forward, obviously they get darker. Helps give your painting a lot of depth. Okay. I'm going to actually rest my hand. Actually, I rest my hand on the camera a lot. I don't do it much when I'm doing the video because uh, I'm painting at an angle. It's kind of weird. Uh, but I do like to rest my hand, the base of my hand on here. And sometimes I'll put my little finger on there to steady my hand. Another great thing about working in acrylics because it can be dry and you can do that. If I'm working in oils, I'd be messing everything up I painted. Um, but I can just use a light touch now, um, right around Space Mountain here. And I'm leaving some of this black for the darker areas into the trees, and give them some character. And I want to create some trees that are smaller trees in front of it. So like right here can be a tree right behind it, another one, so there'd be some more black in there um, to define that. Now, obviously, right here where the, where the hotel is, I will not worry about finishing that because I will come back and uh, after I painted the hotel and then paint the trees in front of it. Um, one of the one of the things I really like to paint is uh, reflections in water, which this will have some. It will be reflecting some of the trees, uh, part of the hotel, and certainly the some of the boat, even though the water will have ripples in it. Uh, you will see some reflections. Now I'm going across at the bottom here painting like bushes and stuff there right along the shoreline. And I've taken liberty again uh, with this painting in uh, what you actually see. At, there are trees over here on this side of the hotel. And of course, this is uh, an outcropping uh, of land going into Bay Lake and to create this whole effect, this whole look that we wanted for this particular painting, um, I was able to do that. Uh, some of the things you see right here in the hotel and in that area will be correct as to what's going on there. And of course, if you've not been with us too long today, there is a new hotel right here. I'm not sure if I like the, the new part. I haven't been in the new part, but I don't know that I care exactly for the design that much. We're going down in, in December, and uh, I think I'll go in and take a look and take a little bit longer look at the whole thing. When you do this, the canvas starts jumping. This has worked out good. <laughs> Our realtor, a good friend, said she was going to keep calling me while I was doing this, so the phone would keep ringing. It hasn't rung. Thank you, Sarah. Actually, last week when I did the, the show, too, I did, the phone did keep ringing. Now, this is actually better right here. When I first did this over here, I, I got a little carried away and, and covered up some of the black areas. But uh, 
that I wanted to leave showing, but that is easily fixed by taking some black and just doing the reverse and then I'll come back afterwards and put some more green and, and browns on top of that. Um, So, that's what I love about acrylic stuff. You can, you can do something and uh, um, let it dry. And then within a matter of minutes, you can paint right over that again. You see what's happening here. I'm getting an angle on my, the way I'm painting with the brush from, a, from the side here, I'm getting a little, um, angular brush strokes. So I'm going to come back in with some green now and a little bit there. Now, now preparing these things. Um, okay, let's see if anybody's asked a question here. I see more people. I carry on. Um, and thank you to those who are sharing this. Oh, no questions. So I have no answers. <laughs> uh oh, is that a question? <laughs> uh, all right. What I'm doing now is is uh, getting more burnt sienna that I'm mixing, so I can. Put that over some of this green that I've done. I'll do it in two levels. I know it's not very uh, uh, defining right at the moment, but uh, it will be in a second when I go on these trees again. You want to have a, a different levels of color on trees you start with the uh, darkest colors first and then work your way forward I like palm trees I remember when we first moved to Florida um, I wanted my parents to stop the car so I could jump out and run up to a palm tree and give it a hug and it hurt because it was one of those palm trees are not smooth, right? So, sort of, sort of, sort of, but anyway. Yeah. Then I discovered over the years that coconut palms seem to have it out for me. Every time I walk near coconut palms, uh, they drop a coconut and almost hit me. That happened quite often. We had one in this one house we, we had uh, when we were, um, newly married and I was just starting at the University of Miami and it was a, right outside our front door and probably in that one year we lived there we were renting that house I think I got almost hit like five times I got so I'd walk out the front door and slide around the side and move down the side of the house and try to get as far away from the tree as possible I had visions of starting to drive down the street and a coconut would hit the back of the car like it'd been flung at me. From. I have a strange imagination. Okay, now I'm going to make a lighter shade of this with the burnt sienna and the phthalo green. It's a little more reddish. So when I actually add a little more sports here. See if I had another camera, I, I don't know, a little more board stand, I could do this maybe. Um, <laughs> that's a nice thing when 
when Bob Ross or when I when I filmed my videos for Bob Ross too, you know, you had a you had uh, different cameras, had three cameras, uh, and one was on your palate and and your hand working. That was a close-up shot, which is real neat. So you could actually mix the colors and see what you're going for. Um, now I'm just going to go over these. Trees that we're doing. Give a little bit of nice color in there. Give it that Florida color. Oh, there's the timer. We are just about at end here I, I have to admit I'm not a fan of Florida flan I'm not a flan I'm not a dessert uh, I uh, not a fan of Florida I don't like hot weather uh, my wife and I grew up in the Miami Beach area or, well from the time I was 13 and we went to high school and did like Miami, Miami Beach. Uh, I, we liked Orlando. Uh, loved Disney, of course. And uh, that was what really kept us there, was, was Disney. But uh, neither of us, Suzanne is originally from St. Louis, and I'm originally from the Chicago area here. And uh, that's why we're back here. We like the change of seasons. Uh, we love snow, love, fall, love all the seasons. And, and I do, I like summer. And the first three or four weeks where it gets hot, I like it. And then after that first three or four weeks, I'm going, is it fall yet? Please let it be fall soon. Uh, but it does make a difference. As you know. Part of my dislike of, uh, of the heat is uh, because of the time I spent in Vietnam. All right, that is going to be it for today. And I want to thank you all for joining me again. Uh, I'll look at how this went. Uh, give, give me your feedback, please. Uh, let me know if uh, you like the, uh, the Saturday uh, time slot like this, or if you all prefer it be Friday afternoons. I'd appreciate that. Uh, I can go back to doing Friday afternoons if that's better for everybody. Uh, I forgot who it was. Somebody <laughs> said, oh, RJ, I can't do Saturdays. Of course, I couldn't do Fridays either, so it <laughs> didn't matter. But thank you all again for joining me. It's been fun. I love telling the stories as usual. And, uh, and next week, I will be working either finishing this up, uh, which might be very likely that I'll be finishing this up before I start on the next painting. Uh, I am. I also have two uh, uh, stretch room paintings that I'm like about a day or two away from having done. So I'll finish those up Monday, Tuesday, the latest, then I'll get back on this and finish this. And then I go on to the next one. And I do have uh, a figment painting coming up. And I also have a uh, another painting that is going to be a lot of fun that is um, a combination of different things uh, in Tomorrowland that I think you'll all find very exciting. So join me again. I will announce, uh, as I hear feedback from you all uh, and everything, I will announce uh, whether it'll be Friday or Saturday uh, early on in the week. And wish us luck. Hopefully we'll have this uh, house we're trying to get, and it will give me a much bigger studio so I can just pile more stuff in there. So I'm going to take a sip of my now cold coffee and say, here's to all you Disney dreamers. Have a nice weekend and a nice week. <laughs>